wait. Let's get on with it. Can you guys hear me? Oh, great. So I thought it would be a talk, but it's going to be a conversation now. <laughs> so let's get it started. So today, my name is Samran Kashya Pralabandi. I go by SK. And on Red Hat Internal, like, I have an IRC ID of SK. And on Freenode, I'm Samran. And I work for com continuous productization team. And my work mostly involves around like uh, OpenShift and uh, building CI pipelines and building tools to optimize the pipelines, et cetera. So today, as, the, as you can see, the talk is about like OpenShift CI pipeline for dummies. And I don't assume any knowledge of, of uh, OpenShift or containers or like uh, per se software also, but uh, I guess you, might, you guys might be knowing about software since you are at DevCon. So our agenda is to talk about like what is software and what are the problems with software and version control and its need. Why do we need version control and common terminology which is coming across like when you start with uh, CI pipelines, continuous integration, continuous delivery, etc. And uh, how do we distribute like code on PyPy and how to build your pipeline uh, using Jenkins on OpenShift. Uh, that was, this would be followed up by a small demo, uh, which is actually recorded for 20 minutes, but uh, I'll try to fast forward it for the talk. Going ahead, what is the software? Uh, as, it's a, as this is a conversation, uh, like, uh, do you guys have any uh, definitions about software? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's from Wikipedia. It doesn't count. So, like, uh, okay, for in my opinion, like, uh, for me, software is like uh, something which is written. Like, uh, for me, software is just a code, uh, code written in a file and which runs on my computer, or it, which it can run on like uh, uh, any other device, like which has the computing power. It can be my washing machine, or like it can be a television. Uh, thanks to Samsung and the other like tech com companies, now software is running everywhere. So th that's how a software is defined. Finally, it comes down to a piece of code or like a set of instructions that you tell a machine to work on. And these are the problems with, with the software, like usually in our like uh, software world. Uh, the first problem is like, does it install properly? And the second problem is, does it install properly on my machine? Because you guys might be working on Mac, MacBooks, Fedoras, or like any other like uh, any other machine per se. Uh, but does it work finally? And does it really work? There is a subtle difference between does it work and does it really work? Because uh, each person who is using a software has their own use case of like, uh, for example, if you. Uh, if you use a paint software, like uh, a child would be using uh, for like painting uh, random diagrams, or a professional would be using for certain other use cases by clipping or cropping. So when, you, when we talk about does it really work, it extensively tests about like software is working for many use cases or not. And where do we store the software? And how do we store it? And how do we verify everything which has which is uh, which is already mentioned above in the questions? Going ahead, and another nightmare we see in every like uh, sysadmins. Like any of you guys are like sysadmins by any chance? Okay, have you ever uh, got this? Like it works on my machine by by one of the customers. So that that's what like happens with me always because uh, I, I I'm like, I'm one of the maintainers of like a uh, uh, project called as Lynchpin, and most of the times like uh, the GitHub issues we see was like okay uh, like um, it doesn't work on my machine and some people say that it works on Fedora but it doesn't work on CentOS. Uh, but we want to make it work on CentOS. That is like a usual nightmare which we, we, we use, usually like uh, have. You know, to do that, like uh, the next big thing is like where do we store the software? Like uh, 
there are like many options to store, store the software. Like during my undergrad days, I used to mail my code, which I'm totally embarrassed of, uh, because like um, we didn't have like a GitHub or like anything. Maybe I was not aware of, about the version control systems at that moment. We used to mail code uh, using Gmail, but thanks to Gmail, they have started blocking the code uh, in zip files like these days. Uh, so we can't. There, that is not an option anymore. And later on, we started using traditional software providers like uh, Google Drive, Dropbox, and OneDrive. But the inherent problem with this, all these uh, kind of software uh, softwares are like uh, we couldn't maintain the versions of of the whole software. So, for example, I have made a change like uh, ten days back, and I want to get that change again right now. So at that moment, like uh, I don't know where if I use Google Drive to do that. Uh, every time I upload my files to Google Drive, it kind of overrides it. Unless it is Google Docs, uh, it has recently introduced a version control system where you can go through different versions. But that, that didn't feel like a proper way to store my code. So then came Git. So I just wanted to share this uh, manual page of Git. Uh, that, that, that is like uh, uh, mentioned as like Git, the stupid content tracker. It's not stupid anymore. It's like it's the best content uh, tracking, uh, content tracking software or the version control software I have ever experienced. So, how does it work? It has like many many features out there, but uh, all I do is like I memorize like uh, four to five commands, and I know the purpose of that: git add, commit, no, git pull, git add, git commit, git push. So these are the four commands which you need to know, like in order to like uh, maintain your software on Git. So this is an interesting definition, uh, like of version control is like the basic idea is about like the homomorphic endo factors mapping submanifolds of Hilbert space, which I don't know what it is. Uh, even like I I'm not sure like uh, creators must be knowing about that. The advantages of version control, which I found it is like we can get the continuous backup of a software. So we can backup the software like uh, to a certain extent that we can revert that software from the like uh, to, to not even 10 days or like it can it can time is literally time travel from one uh, particular checkpoint to another checkpoint. So these are the like Git 101 things which you do. There will be a remote repository on GitHub or somewhere on your hosted server, and you'll have your working directory. And you use Git add to uh, Git add command to add the working directory onto the staging and staging. And they, you use commit to actually like uh, resolve, finalize the finalize the version of your software, and you push it back to the remote repository. So that's how you do like uh, Git, and there's like whenever you have the perfect backup of your software, and you always have confidence to move on or to like go with the next steps, like uh, installation of softwares or like um, resolve resolve some other problems with the software. Going ahead, uh, let's see the terminology. Like uh, you need to know uh, about like uh, continuous uh, CI pipelines before we get into the actual topic. One is containers, and the other terms are continuous integration, continuous delivery, continuous deployment, and there are like many continuous these days. Like uh, our team at Red Hat is called as continuous productization, and there is like continuous improvement coming up. Uh, there, there are like ma many things which you continuously do. Then, uh, and we will see through the definitions of like some of those. And we know what we should we should be knowing what Jenkins is, and we should be knowing what OpenShift is and different types of configurations in OpenShift. So coming to the continuous things, um, the thing which has been bothering everyone like since many decades is like, uh, well, like whenever a software is released, like uh, there will be versions of softwares, a lot of enhancements, a lot of bug fixes, and a like, lot of features coming up. So the basic uh, trend nowadays which uh, goes around like all the software is continuous integration, continuous delivery, and continuous deployment. So continuous integration comes into picture where you keep on merging every commit. Every commit which a de de developer says, 
on to uh, on to your like production environment or like uh, uh, you create a build of the software which which is continuously uh, uh, which is continuously aligns with the actual production repository so that is when we call it as a continuous integration because every software has like lots of nowadays every software has a lot of dependencies and pieces which you need to put it together like a lego uh, and if one of the like a pieces fails uh, the whole software fails again so to make sure that everything is working fine continuous integration is one of the process and the other uh, other thing is like um, the other most ambiguous two terms are continuous delivery and continuous deployment there is a subtle difference between uh, continuous delivery and deployment delivery is something which you reliably release your software uh, so whenever i say uh, software x has released like 1.0 it is the most stable version and i'm going to deliver it to all the distributions out there and so that people can install it uh, install it but continuous deployment is something which if there is a running software like um, an apache server or like a python based server and you continuously update the existing packages while running the software out there and we have a stage production and test environments like all together uh, making sure that the deployment of the software runs runs uh, runs as per the tests which are being run against that particular application going ahead why continuous why do we need continuous because like whenever a software really is released it doesn't mean that the software is perfect there it is a process where like the evolution happens and it turns into a like a production quality software where people can use using the uh, using all the test mechanisms and other uh, other things but uh, the basic reasons of like uh, the continuous things that are which are happening are because to ensure the standard practices and to ensure the software is delivered fast at at a faster rate and people get the time to market of a software is reduced and if 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 we fail also like uh, we would like to fail consistently so that we could fix it in the next version so that is the important um, go get away with the continuous uh, improvement of the existing software going ahead so this is the ci cd loop which every software is like uh, nowadays following where you code a particular software and you plan uh, you very and you build that software and later on you test the software release and deploy into the production and make the customers use it and later on you you can just monitor it so depending upon the feedback which you get you can just again plan recode and rebuild everything so and enhance it so what are containers so containers are these buzzwords recently came into picture like uh, after a long time where there are, these are this isolated user spaces so if you have a very big machine of like a, a 128 gb ram and like 8 terabytes so if you want to share the whole machine with uh, different processes together uh, we need to create some isolation so previously it used to happen with virtual machines but later the problem with virtual machines was like virtual machines were very heavy in nature and each has its own operating system complete operating system running uh, and a lot of unnecessary like software which is running as an isolated environment in in terms of virtual machines but whereas containers uh, lessen the burden by creating small user spaces using a uh, technology called sc groups i'm not going to go in detail into it but it kind of simulates the whole uh, server environment in terms of a process and you can you can give you the whole feel of the like uh, operating system within a container so that that resulted in this like previously people used to say it works on my machine now people started saying it works on my container so this is an example file of a docker uh, docker which is used to create your own like container so what it does is like uh, it pulls from uh, it pulls from the main repository of like a fedora uh, and it uh, pulls down the fedora image and it runs uh, a command called as dnf install and runs the like command and installs the software on top of that image 
and it also says that okay this will be the uh, slash temp slash would be the you are start working directly and this is a container if you run the container without the last statement there uh, it would just run and it stop uh, it would stop after like few seconds because container needs uh, something uh, needs something to like uh, achieve each container has a purpose of of running a command or running a web server or ru ru running anything but uh, if you want to con uh, keep on like if you want to keep on uh, make the container running always you use uh, some uh, like uh, some command like tail hyphen f dev slash null to make it uh, may it works like an infinite loop so to make the container running always and finally uh, jenkins uh, jenkins is a tool which people started using for the whole automation purposes where uh, it, it it can achieve like a law it can achieve uh, by means of like plugins and shell scripts or Jenkins job files by uh, creating many uh, scheduled uh, running builds and triggers notifications and automated scripts and pipelines and it also does the multi node de delegation where like if there are um, like uh, different types of uh, operating systems you want to test a software on jenkins is a um, jenkins is a software which you go to uh, because it can you do the delegation if if you want to run uh, a script on a fedora slave uh, it can also do that and it also has like a, a log, logging mechanism where it, it can uh, record every every uh, instruction which you ran against a particular slave, slave using Jenkins. So five like in just Jenkins is a tool which automates stuff uh, with the help of scripts, plugins, and job files. And how Jenkins come in, coming to picture like with Open OpenShift. Uh, Jenkins is a um, is a tool. As I said, it builds software, or it can do anything which you want to. Uh, J Jenkins takes the code from Git, uh, Git server, and it can also uh, it has a feature to build a Docker container, and it can run it can also run it on OpenShift. So OpenShift comes with a CI server that can um, build, deploy, and deploy the containers for you. The, so whenever a software is nowadays delivered, like you, in order to make sure the software is always running, we de deliver it in, inside a container instead of a RPM package or any other like a script, uh, any other repository, because containers have uh, become a reliable source of uh, software distribution. Because uh, Distribution because uh, because of their uh, isolated environment nature and um, because of I'm sorry <laughs> uh, isolated environment uh, environment nature and it is sure, it is sure that it would work at any point of time using Docker. So OpenShift is a uh, OpenShift or recently changed its name to like OKD or Origin Kubernetes Distribution. Uh, it is a kind of built around like the Docker containers and um, Kubernetes distribution platform, uh, which uh, manages the whole like uh, different kinds of containers, and it, it, it can also load balance on the containers. So OpenShift has like many. Uh, many configurations which you can make use of to build containers and de to deploy containers and to store uh, different metadata about the containers and uh, also it, it can also the create pipelines and pods inside the container and we'll see that in detail. I build like OpenShift in OpenShift terminology like each um, configuration is termed as a template to do a specific task. For example, when you see a build config, uh, build config is something which you tell OpenShift how to build the image of a container. And a deployment config is about uh, is about the way how you deploy or how you run the container uh, with all different load balancers and um, like any health checks or triggers, etc. And config maps are something which we use to store the credentials or any other metadata which is related to the container, which can be available at the time of uh, running at the time of running a container as environment variables inside the container. 
finally, like uh, OpenShift also has like uh, previously it used to be a preview, but uh, now OpenShift supports uh, pipelines where you can have a series of steps use uh, which can be ran through Jenkins, uh, which uses the containers. Uh, containers using an OpenShift domain specific language and uh, separate OpenShift plugin so that like you can achieve the whole uh, pipeline deployment or like a uh, software deployment or release process using a, using um, uh, user defined steps inside a Jenkins file and pod is nothing but a collection of containers which you want to run standalone instead of running it as a deployment or the advantage of uh, deploy a pod is like it, this is the best mechanism to test your container. So you you just create a pod file and you uh, copy paste the pod file onto the OpenShift environment, and it it runs as a container, and you can delete the pod anytime. However, in case of a deployment, uh, deployment uh, like by by configuration, by default configuration, deployments always tend to be replicating in nature, even though if you accidentally delete it. So, uh, deployments are something which you use for uh, a production environment. Finally, like how do we deploy? How do we deploy the containers, and how do we uh, define all these uh, deployments? So. The best part is like uh, OpenShift talks YAML. So instead of uh, having a long JSON or like uh, any other XML definitions, uh, OpenShift has a, a simplified nature of like um, defining things using YAML. Before that, like uh, if you want to have your OpenShift run running on your local machine, uh, you just create. Uh, this is a this is an instruction set which is used for installing Open Mini Shift on your current um, like uh, Fedora machine. So if you want to uh, do it on your like uh, Windows machine or like any other distribution, there are a set of documentation set of the documentation instructions on on the OpenShift website. But um, like uh, for for uh, running an OpenShift uh, on your like uh, local environment to test things, uh, we use we install the libvirt dependencies uh, and we install like we make sure that your current username uh, is added to the libvirt group to manage the uh, to manage the KVM and all the virtual machines, and you download the Minishift binary um, from from the Minishift GitHub repository. And you just start uh, start with like mini shift start command. So uh, this is this is a build config example build config for building the uh, Docker file which is already like mentioned before. So most of the times what I what any person like uh, would do is like just copy paste a working working YAML file and try to edit it while understanding it. So the the pretty like uh, build configs are like pretty intuitive in nature because if you can read through the whole build config, you you can understand by the by the key value pairs. So for example, uh, it uses an API version of like version one, and it's a template, and further it has it has been labeled as a template by a template name called as like Fedora, and it has like different annotations. Uh, which can be like uh, perfectly ignored because these annotations, even though if you don't men mention it, these are generated by OpenShift uh, inherently. And each config has its own objects. Like uh, for example, uh, uh, we are using an image stream to build the whole uh, um, Fedora Fedora container, and this image stream is again referred. Uh, referred as an output for the container. So whenever a container is built, it is being pushed to the OpenShift image image stream. And this particular um, section called a source is used to build uh, S2I images, the source to image images from uh, Git itself. So if I mention a GitHub repository URL as a parameter, uh, it can go back um, and pull that repository and put it inside the container, or it can refer to the Docker file remotely, which is on onto the uh, GitHub repository or any other external Git server. 
and it also follows like different strategies. Currently, we are using Docker strategy where and with no cache is equal to true, like which says that whenever a request to build comes to OpenShift, it should build from from the scratch instead of using all the layers inside the Docker uh, or in, like instead of using all the like. Um, uh, instead of using all the pre-populated steps or pre uh, pre-ran steps, it it uses it tries to build it from the scratch, and it it can also have like different kinds of triggers. Like uh, you can make make OpenShift do things like uh, whenever a person pushes to the repository, uh, whenever there is a commit being created, you can trigger a change in the whole build configs. So for more information, like you can just refer the OpenShift documentation, uh, like uh, which is more detailed. This is a basic example to create a Fedora Builder container using a build config. Going ahead, uh, you can pass the parameters uh, in build config uh, using a parameters like attribute, so, uh, which has which has like uh, which is nothing but a key value pairs which you pass to a container while while it is being built. And the next part is like a deployment config. As I said, deployment con configs are like uh, very replicative in nature. Like uh, if there is any, if there is uh, any accidental delete in the pro in the environment, it tries to create recreate it again so that uh, it doesn't affect the like uh, customers who are using the using the deployment config. And it also has config maps, as I said before. It, it is used mostly used for passing metadata or the credentials as environment variables inside the containers. Finally, the pipelines. So pipelines are something uh, which where you declare, uh, as I said, where, where you declare different stages of a particular Jenkins uh, environment, so that Jenkins can pull up, pull down the Jenkins file from the external repository and run those steps within the containers. So the example pipeline looks like this, and uh, it is uh, as said, as said before with the build configs is, is kind of applicable to pipelines also. It can also pull from the remote Git repositories. So this is an example repository which is being created, and this is a sample file where it uses a gro groovy DSL uh, where you can declare different stages of like building a container. Uh, in this current example, uh, we have used. In this current example, we have used like different stages like build, deploy container, wait, clone, clone the particular source code, and install the source code, and test the source code, and start like uh, start building the another uh, another uh, container using the same source code. And you can also like uh, create a release uh, with with running commands like. Uh, commands like twine or like a pypy release or, or any shell script also. So finally, there is a stage uh, called as a cleanup stage. So once the, uh, the whole work is done, you can directly clean up. So as I said before, like you can run pods um, as the diff as individual like uh, containers, like without anything, anything related to um, without anything related to like uh, deployment configs or build configs. So this is how you do it. So let's create a project and uh, create a build config and create a pipeline and start building. So I have a demo, like a uh, demo to uh, that simulates the whole distribution pipeline where uh, I use a p Python package called as like gummy bears, which is already uh, on GitHub repository, which does nothing but like when run gummy bears, it just uh, prints hello there. So this is a PyPy package, and like uh, let me start the demo. So and uh, as I like men mentioned in the examples, this is one of the Docker files which I've been using uh, to create the whole pipeline release, and each of the steps in the pipeline. Uh, or like uh, to build the whole package and later on uh, test the package and deploy it to the PyPy repository. And this is the OpenShift environment where you just 
uh, go ahead and copy paste. There is an option called as add YAML to the project where you can just copy paste the build configs and it creates the whole Im images and it creates the deployment configurations and it also creates the pipelines. So now we are just creating the pipeline and as I said, like we are just uh, copy pasting the whole uh, the whole YAML files and changing the parameters accordingly. So once the pipeline is being created, uh, we need to uh, we need to start the pipeline. But in in this case, like pipeline just failed because the credentials were not available. So I just created a like a config map which shows the credentials, and now the pipeline is started again. Let me just fast forward it. So as you can see, it's uh, currently building inside the Jenkins container. Uh, the container is built from scratch, so it uh, starts from DNF update and installs the packages and uh, installs the, the whole PyPy package. As you can see, the, there is an error involved here, like uh, because uh, there is no change in the PyPy repository, there, there is no change in the repository, so I created a commit which uh, updates the version of the particular software and re-ran the build again. So once the build is being rerun, it updates to the PyPy uh, repository again with the help of the pipeline. There you go, like we got 0 .0 0.0.3 version. And that's it, any questions? So OpenShift contains uh, Jenkins of its own, yeah, like OpenShift has like an, a different set of image catalog where you have the Jenkins images which are already there. So once you deploy the Jenkins image, uh, it uh, automatically detects the pipelines and uh, it is kind of prepackaged with the uh, OpenShift plugin, so which identifies the OpenShift resources within the Jenkins. Yes, that's it. Any questions? Yep. You're welcome. Thank you.